G'day guys, um, Jess and Chris here again uh, from YouTube. We're trying something a little different today. Um, we're going to look into cold cases around Melbourne area and um, hopefully we might get some answers for people. Um, today we're going to be discussing um, the cold case of Denise Gail McGregor, who was a 12 year old girl. Um, and uh, we'll show some um, places of where she was and, and her final moments. So here are uh, the um, corner shop that she was visiting in uh, on the corner of Westgate and Anderson Street. It's now a dance school, of course, but um, back in 1978. Uh, her and her sister came here on the corner of this store to, to grab some food, uh, fish and chips to be exact. And um, they purchased that and started heading back towards their home. Um, unfortunately, on the way, um, Denise wanted to grab a, an Easter egg and a drink and she told her sister to keep walking home with the food and she turned around and came back. Um, she did purchase, she got her Easter egg and her drink and around 7.30 she left this corner milk bar and started heading back towards her home on Bell Street. So we'll head back that way. Remind you, she was uh, 12 years old. So we can only assume she walked down this way or down the street. Tracking her tracking movements. Then I'll give you a better shot of the corner shop. So there's the old corner shop there where she purchased her food. It was at 7.30 at night, as I said, so she started heading back home. Now, Denise, of course, is one of four children. Um, her parents, um, Cecil and Carmel McGregor, they all grew up in Penshurst, which is down near Warnable, I think, isn't it, Chris? Yes, it yeah, is. down near Warnable. Um, that way, anyway. When they grew up, they moved back up to here, to Pascoe Vale in Melbourne, which is a suburb of Melbourne, and uh, lived along Bell Street. Now, we're heading towards Bell Street now, um, so we're assuming this is the way she walked. Um, on the day of the 27th, uh, 20th, sorry, 20th of March, 1978, her and her sister went to that corner shop to purchase. So this was on the 20th in 1978 of March. She walked back down this way by herself. Her sister was already on her way home. So it's 42 years this year that Denise walked down these paths. So whether it obviously has changed a lot 42 years ago, but we're hoping, hoping someone knows something. Okay, so Denise would have crossed the road back there. I'll come around the corner. Excuse the loud traffic. We are on a major road here. Um, in Bell Street, Melbourne. She would have walked down this way or back 42 years ago. It probably wasn't as busy as it is today. Um, she may have been able to cross the road. And we're just going to try and locate number 629 um, where she was 200 metres from the shop when she unfortunately was abducted. And... Um, and over here, sorry, I've got to move back oh, again. The, that's where, roughly the area where she was abducted. They are brand new units now. So, um, she was abducted along that street over there. We're not going to attempt to cross the road. It's quite busy. So that's the area there. Now we're just going to walk back down Anderson Street. Um, 
I've showed you the location roughly where she was taken. Now, she was abducted on that busy road there from the corner shop, as you can see down on the corner there. Um, she was brutally murdered in a horrific, horrific way. And uh, her body was dumped 55 k's from Melbourne um, near Wallen. 16 hours later after she was abducted and um, reported missing by her, her mum and dad and family, her body was found. by road workers and uh, yeah very very sad case um, she was horrifically horrifically murdered this is the other side of the the footpath we're walking up this time towards towards the milk bar that she would have gone to very sad case, uh, has never been solved. Uh, they did have a suspect for a while, but he was cleared. So that's the corner store again, and that's looking down the street where she would have gone. Now we're gonna head out to her final resting place, which is at the Faulkner Cemetery, and we'll pay our respects there to her, and we'll chat a little bit more. See you soon. Just sitting in the car at the moment. Hopefully we're, we're going to try and find where she was uh, put uh, after she was abducted and murdered. Um, out in Wallen, near Wallen. Um, what happened to her was absolutely atrocious and should not happen to any little girl, yet alone anybody. Um, I would like to see this case solved if, if someone knows of anything um, to please come for. Um, there's the picture of the, it just sort of seems so surreal sitting here knowing that she walked out that door there down that street and was gone. Someone would have seen something or knows of something. Well we will try and find her place where she was put by the killer who has never been found. Okay guys, bit of an update. Uh, Chris, we've got Chris with us today, um, which is Jessica's husband. He's our driver. Um, <laughs> we've just been doing a little bit of reading up on the case and it looks like she, if she was abducted on that busy road, someone would have seen her. Yeah. Um, she would have, yeah. she would have, you know, screamed or or something like that. Yeah, and the, the egg she had and the drink, the drink she had would have been left behind. There would have been a struggle. So looking, reading up on, on what Chris is reading up, we, we have come to the conclusion that she may have known the the, the murderer that she, she got well, into yeah. the car without a fuss, a fuss with. And they never discovered the drink or the Easter egg when she no. got a, abducted. So she was abducted on Bell Street. She was taken from Bell Street. Um, from the corner store here and uh, um, we'll keep going and we'll keep searching and hopefully we might be able to find the road. The road has changed name yeah. uh, or has been demolished. Um, we can't find records unfortunately of the original road uh, out near Wallen um, but we do have a, a clipping of uh, um, which we will pull that in um, a clipping from the newspaper of the, the old road that she was. Um, if we keep struggling uh, to find this area, we'll just go straight to her final resting place. Hi guys, we're uh, back again. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't find um, where the road was. Um, so we're here at the cemetery. Um, going to find her final resting spot. It's a beautiful entrance. Oh, 
Okay, so here we are at the Faulkner Cemetery where Denise is buried. Yep. Just going to have a little look-see. Oh. Alright guys, so we have found Denise's final resting place. Um, looks like the plaque is gone. Um, I don't know which side would be hers. This side. This side. Where those flowers are. Yeah. Yeah. So we've brought some flowers for her that we're going to put in. Um, for Denise and her final resting place. Lovely, Jess. Beautiful. Rest in peace, darling. This was. Uh, Denise was uh, loved very much by her family, her siblings, her mum and dad. Um, very, very sadly missed. A tragic accident, uh, not an accident, I should say, a tragic murder that should not have happened to a little 12-year-old girl who was innocently coming home from the, the milk bar, um, taken and viciously murdered. I would really like and I and I pray and I hope that some justice will come for Denise and I hope one day that um, someone will come forward with some information um, if anyone has any information big or small it doesn't matter please contact Crime Stoppers their number is 1800 333 000 So thank you guys um, for today. Um, we hope that you have some information about Denise and uh, please call Crime Stoppers if you do. And we hope you enjoyed mm. this video. Um, we did the best we could uh, for our first time at doing a cold case. Uh, we, if this hits off, we'd like to do more. And um, yes, we hope to see you on the next video. Please like and subscribe. To our channel and support us in what we're doing thank you very much and we'll see you on the next video